Mic check, mic check. Say mic check, Chuck. Chuck, check. Close enough. Hey folks, it's Grimwit, and with me today is Chuck and his returning role as our best friend ever. Say hello, Hi. Chuck. Hi. And my uh, head. I I have no job today because my truck can't pull any weight anymore. Today's question is: Is language a living thing? And now that I've asked that question, let's ignore it completely. Chuck, I haven't talked to you in a couple of weeks. How are you? I'm good. I have a headache. And a throat ache. <coughs> you have an everything ache. Yeah, but it's good for me. So. Oh. Not a problem. Do, uh, does suffering build character? Is that why? Uh, actually, yes. Oh, well, you must be like the best character ever. <laughs> I try. <laughs> um, basically, suffering either makes you a better person or drives you mad. It, it really depends on how you see it. Um, and it has a lot to do with the society that you live in. Um, in the standard American society, um, any sort of pain tolerance at all, people call you crazy. They say you're a mad man. Are you sure it's not a survivor? Because that's the feeling I got. That's why there are so many inspirational talkers that have survived cancer, or being set on fire, or being yes. shot at war. But those stories are all about people who were in pain, but are now better. Ooh, okay, you got me there. So, people who are currently suffering... Um, are generally ignored. Uh, they're put in hospitals, they're put in nursing homes, they're put in institutions. That's just how we handle pain in the United States. Other countries, some handle it worse, some handle it better. Just depends. Mm. I have no clue where I'm going to drive, but I know I'm going to break the speed limit. Hmm. Uh. Have you driven past any Osfarts recently? I finally got a uh, answer to that. Osfart is uh, is German for exit. Oh. Yeah, that's why. That's, that's why they're so. <laughs> yes, it is. I, I was hoping you would pull over and it would be a giant Bohemian chili cook-off. <laughs> In the middle of Germany, of course. Wait. No, I'm not going to ask where where Ost or where uh, Bohemia is. So. I think I've already established that geography is my worst subject. So let me tell you, I I've been doing this show for a while, and this feels less like a Let's Play and more like a podcast. I'm really enjoying just talking to people and driving, Chuck. That's good. And I, I mean, that's that's the point. If you're not enjoying it, there's not much use in doing it. I mean, unless you're making a fortune off of it. I am not. No, well. I'm making, like, maybe $5 a month off of it. I've, I've always only made about $5 a month off of this. Hey, that's a, that's a KFC Famous Bowl. Hey, I can... That's, that's, not, that's not bad. Now you made me hungry for KFC. You know, maybe I, I'll maybe I'll stop at uh, Freddy Fazbear's for pizza. Uh, I will tell you a geography story. All right. Um, so my wife uh, and I got tickets last weekend to the Antiques Roadshow. Whee. Which, in case anyone was wondering whether or not I'm elderly, you have your answer. <laughs> my wife and I got tickets to the Antiques Roadshow. And we, we went. Uh, we drove to West Virginia, a state that I had never been in. Um, and I learned some things. And among them is that KFC is the fanciest restaurant in West Virginia. Um, that may not be true. <laughs> but it certainly felt true. Because we were in Charleston, West Virginia, the capital of West Virginia, 
and there were KFCs everywhere. And we stopped at two different KFCs that weekend just because they were everywhere. And they were both really nice. Well, what do you really mean, really? nice. Well, like, like, like tablecloths. And friendly people. And fresh food. I, I need to get out of Maryland. There aren't. There's no such thing as friendly uh, fast food restaurants in this place. Uh, fresh food. Thing... Wait, at a KFCs? Yeah, yeah, fresh and delicious. I mean, it was really good. It was really, really good. Uh, the only other place we ate at while we were there was a breakfast-only place called Biscuit World. <laughs> and you might be able to guess what they serve. Um, worlds? Entire no, wa planets? Waffles. Waffles. Yeah. Of course. Hope worlds doesn't make no, much sense. Very, very good biscuits, though. Biscuits biscuits <laughs> the size of my head. <laughs> that was, it was really, really good. Um, so the food was good in West Virginia. I also learned that there is no such thing as a flat surface in West Virginia. I, I grew up in the Oklahoma Ozark Mountains. Which is a misnomer. There are yeah. no mountains in Oklahoma. Very true. Uh, lots of little hills, things like that. West Virginia, legit mountain range. I mean, houses built on the sides of hills at 90 degree angles. People using a, a complex system of ropes and pulleys just to get in their front door. Very, very complicated architecture, these people living in West Virginia. There are stairs everywhere. Yeah. Also and it's all, steps. And it's nigh impossible to run uh, gas pipelines and things like that because the ground is solid rock. There's maybe an inch of dirt and everything else is solid rock. So a lot of these people... I mean, you'll see a half million dollar home and it's still using a wood stove. That's just, they have lots of wood and so they use it. It was, it was really nice. It was, it was like stepping into the past. It actually sounds kind of nice. It, it was very, very nice. And the road show was fun. Um, we waited in line for hours and I brought a little cast iron toy that I thought was very old. And I went up to the toy and collectibles appraiser, who I've watched on TV countless times and actually kind of admire. Mm -hmm. um, walked up to him, said, hello, my name is. And he looked at me and said, reproduction. <laughs> didn't say hi, didn't ask how I was doing. Said, this is a reproduction. It is basically fake. It's not worth anything. How much did you pay for it? I was like, well, my, my father-in-law bought it. He paid 50 bucks for it. Your father-in-law got screwed. <laughs> I was like, jeez. Okay. So I guess what I'm trying to say is don't don't meet your heroes. No, I, I already know not to meet your heroes. I learned the hard way reading uh, Plato's Republic. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I remember that conversation. You should you should have stopped by and visited us and picked up my World War II helmet. <laughs> Had I the time or the money for fuel, I would have definitely come by to say hello. Mm -hmm. But as it stands, you were still a good six to eight hours away from West Virginia. Yeah, I know. So. The thing was that Queenie gave me... Now, uh, this is not on you, so you don't need to apologize. Queenie gave me the idea that you guys were going to stop by and then apparently that was not able to happen which, you know, I, I don't have a problem with that but she didn't tell me mm, that's sad so I was like huh, I wonder where they went and this is like, you know, a couple of days after. It's like, oh, they, they went to Auntie Grocer. It's like, huh, I wonder how come they didn't visit us. And that's when Queen is like, oh, well, they couldn't do, you know, this and this happened. I'm like, huh, I wonder why they didn't tell tell me. I'm like, well, they told me. Oh, so you knew. <laughs> well, as you know, I don't do surprises. Ever. So if I were coming to see you, you would know a good week 
two weeks in advance. Hey, this is Charlie calling. My, my name's Charlie. You call me Chuck sometimes, but whatever. Um, I'm coming to visit you in a couple of weeks. And I am totally going to do that. Yeah, and then I would have done that thing, because I don't lie either. Yeah, but you know so. me. I'd, I'd wait until we're outside of your house. And you say, would. look, in, in the next week sometime, we're going to show up. And then I'd knock on your door. <laughs> <laughs> sometime in the next 20 to 34 minutes. No, nah, I'd say just sometime in the next week, and technically I would be correct. Because that's how I do things. <laughs> if I can't aggravate you, what's the fun? I couldn't tell you. Mm. Good times. So Good now times. I am home, back from the road show. None of the things I took were worth very much money, but it was a lot of fun. Um... I, I did meet one lady um, who was very, very friendly, and she brought a painting that was worth like 20 grand. Nice. And yeah, she was really happy. And she went to get it appraised, and we, we saw her appraisal because she was in line kind of next to us. And the guy was like, this is a really nice painting. It's from so-and-so, worth $20,000. You should get it insured for $30,000. And she's like, all right, I get to be on TV. And they're like, no. Yeah. And she said, but, but why not? I, I brought this really fancy painting and, you know, I want to be on TV. And they were like, yeah, someone yesterday brought in the same painting. Oh. And we can't, we can't show it on TV twice. So even though your painting is in better shape than hers, um, we already recorded her segment and we're not going to waste film on you. Have a nice day. So... Never meet your Her heroes. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it, it. that's okay. It was a lot of fun, though. It was a lot of fun. Um, because antiques. I don't know. Because antiques. Hey, antiques are fun. If you like history, and you like pieces of history, there you go. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> speaking of history, um, we were near another lady... And uh, I, I'm not going to make you do the video editing thing because I know this is how you relax with mm. the trucking. But the crazy cat lady from The Simpsons. Yeah. She looked just like her. Yeah. It was really great. And, you know, when you're in line for several hours with hundreds of people you don't know and you share a common interest, you start talking about the things you brought. And so... I asked her, hey, nice person, what did you bring to the road show today? <laughs> and she's carrying a shoebox, which is fine, because I'm also carrying a shoebox with my antiques in it. Shoebox is normal. And she looks at me and says, I brought my cans. Cans? Yeah. So I'm thinking, okay, cool. She has like an old Coke can from the 1920s or whatever. Or she um, had like an old soup can from the 1800s or whatever. Well, it, it turns out she had a bunch of old soup cans from, I'd say, 2012, 2013. I mean, they, they weren't dated, but they were brand new cans. Just, right. One just, of those vintage two-year cans. Just as many as you could pack into a shoebox. And she was so, so happy. So I didn't, I didn't say anything to her. I didn't have the heart. I was just like, well, I, I hope that does well for you. That and sounds like something you'd say to a complete stranger. Well, she was so happy. Like I'm I mean it, it's not hurting her, it's not hurting anyone else. Just let her just let her have the illusion. You know? Yeah. What are you gonna do? Burst her bubble? Well that's Actually, what you, I, that's what you would do because You know what I wouldn't do that, because honestly, you're right. She's happy and who who am I to take that away from? I'm, I'm not that sadistic. Hmm. Maybe now, not anymore. Now, if I were one of the appraisers, <laughs> I would be that sadistic because I don't got time for this. <laughs> if you, if you were one of the appraisers and you had just spent the last twelve hours looking at thousands of items, essentially for free, because they don't get paid much for what they do, you would probably mess with her. You would probably tell her that. 
you know. Oh, oh wow, where did you get this? This is a genuine Van Gogh Campbell's tomato soup can. What if it turns out that the soup cans that she actually has were part of a Jasper Jones uh, statue or sculpture? <laughs> Which I don't know if you know about Jasper Jones, Chuck, but one of his sculptures is like six beer cans glued to a piece of wood and it sell sells for like thousands of dollars. <laughs> He, he did it as a joke, and people took it seriously. <clears throat> Somebody made an offhand cam uh, uh, conversation as, Oh, Jasper Jones, he could just take six beer cans and make it into art. So he did. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, it's, it's sold for like a ridiculous amount of money, and that's what she actually had. <clears throat> art. Art. I don't know. I, I used to art. Yeah, many I remember. Years ago. I, I still have your art. It's, some of it I, I have labeled as guest art. Mm, I miss art. Sometimes. Then other times I remember that I sucked at it. So it was probably better that I quit. You didn't suck at it. Eh. That's nice of you to say. Is this like if we were in line at the road show? Is this what you're doing now? Oh, it's it's fine. Dude. Yeah. Dude, do you have any clue the amount of diarrhea poured into the internet in the name of art? Have you ever tried to sift through the junk pile that is deviant art to find something even worth looking at for a couple of seconds? You were okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I suppose. That was ten years ago, though. You did things one pixel at a time, and it actually came out pretty good. Probably the best MS Paint art I've ever seen, because you, like, you, you didn't try and use the mouse as a pencil. You used it as a tool. Well, I had two things going for me when I did that webcomic. Uh, the best one was sitting at Creative Labs. <laughs> helping customers over the phone, I just, most of it I was on autopilot, so I could just draw yeah. on MS Paint, which was nice. I don't have that anymore. And, you know, the other stuff. Whatever. Um, I'm tired now. <laughs> and and the, is your headache cleared up any? Oh, no. No, that won't be gone until probably next week. Well, I'll tell you, the best way to get rid of a headache is to look up a very soothing game uh, on YouTube that has recently come out called Five Nights at Freddy's. Now this is probably one of the most relaxing uh, relaxing games I've seen. Very short of uh, Endless Blue for the Nintendo Wii, which is about diving and swimming with fish. Five mm -hmm. Nights at Freddy's is um, a simulation of a security guard job. And generally you just sit there it's, oh. the, yeah, the entire game takes place with, place with you just sitting in a chair in, in a room, watching well, that, cameras. That sounds really peaceful. Yeah, it's, um, very, it's very quiet. I, th I think I'll, uh, when we're done here, um, I'll put my headphones on, I'll, I'll turn them all the way up, you know, so I can hear well. And uh, I'll turn the lights off, because, you know, you don't want eye strain. And yeah. uh, I'll watch those relaxing videos. Yeah, they are very relaxing. All that right. sounds... <laughs> sounds great thank you you know i don't say this often enough you are a true and faithful friend and uh, and the fact that you're willing to help me relax like that really means a lot to me thank you i am and you're quite welcome thank you very much i appreciate that so let's see where was i oh yeah is language a living thing um i don't really care do you do you, do you care um, language is not sentient, so no. Language is not a living thing. <laughs> language has no heartbeat. Language has no circulatory system. Um, I actually admire the French and German governments, though, because they have people in charge of their language. They actually get to decide, okay, this new word, that's a word now. This word's stupid or 
We like this word, but we want it to be spelled in a different way. English doesn't have that, and that's really a shame. Because I am a grammar Nazi, and I would love it if English had more strictly defined rules and regulations than it has. I'm a fan of big government. I love when things are regulated and mandated. I hate free will and independent thought. Um, I'm just listening to you going, I thought language was fashion, not fascism. Well, you know, we, we can't all be heroes. But in, in my opinion, the two most important people in the world are Merriam and Webster. So what are you going to do? They're you, dead. We killed them. <laughs> they live on in our language, you know, because apparently language is alive. Something. Maybe language isn't alive, it's just haunted. Ooh, I like that. I was looking, or I was uh, uh, listening to Doctor Who. And um, the Doctor Who radio shows are very good. The one that I had just finished is called Ish. That's ellipses, I-S-H. And it is about a um, program whose job it is, is to be a living dictionary. And they encounter a living word. Uh, it had to do with two concepts, and the concepts were very hard for me to grasp, so I had to stop and think about them for a long time. Whoa, 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 whoa shit. Okay, I, I... There was no way I could have avoided that accident. I, it's not my fault. The guardrail came right at me. I... It was actually moving towards me, and it kept adjusting to where I was going to hit it no matter what. Damn. So now the guardrail is moving. Uh, it certainly looks like it's moving to me. Came up to me out of nowhere, man. Had to thin out its numbers. <laughs> Quick, it's coming right for us. Quick, thin out its numbers. <laughs> we mm. have. <laughs> I remember back when South Park was funny. Now it's just, well, it's South Park. It's, it's become too... it's become more South Park than comedy. It's too political now. Mm. Um, that's that's my opinion. But you know, what are you gonna do? Watch it ram itself into the ground, cause that's what that's the only way it'll die off. Oh, and admittedly, though, that's what Trey and Matt said they were going to do. Yeah. And they were very vocal early on about saying, you know, this is not our love, this is our work, and we will use it to make as much money as we can until it dies. And then we'll move on to the next thing. They just haven't had to move on yet. It makes sense. I mean, what they go through to write each program is... Did I say program? You did. What they do to write the script, and they, they do it like a weekly basis, is pretty grueling. Well, they get paid for their time. Yeah, and they get paid a lot of money. Yep. Out of my way, car. Ah, guard, guardrail's gonna get him. Oh, the guardrail did get him. Oh, no, no, my mistake. Damn it. Why does the guardrail hate me? What did I ever do to the guardrail? Except hit it a few times and lobby against it. God, this is a long-ass road. I figured by the end of this road, I'd stop the program. I mean, show. You're saying program again. Did, did I say program? I'm human. There's no body in the trunk. What money? Are you human, Mike? Yes! Or are we dancers? I'm human. I swear to Dagon. I don't get that reference. <laughs> Some Lovecraftian uh, scholars will. <clears throat> so anyway, two two concepts in this Doctor Who episode. One of which I have a real problem with, but... Uh, Alright, they tried to apply a mathematical concept to a word, and they called it the omniverbum which is a word that is infinitely long, kind of like how pi 
has an unknown number of digits. This is a word that has an unknown number of syllables. Okay. Yeah, and I'm immediately like, well, pi is has an unknown number of digits, but it has a very finite definition. Like we we have a relatively small equation that defines pi. And that's how we know how to figure out what pi is. Mm -hmm. But the omniverbum, how would you figure out what it is? Like, where do the syllables come from? <laughs> like how, where would you go in order to reference the word? So I'm like, okay, problem one. The next one I, could, I actually didn't have such a big problem with, which is what gave me the qu idea for the question, is, is language alive? Um, and it is the concept of a sentient meme that lives in language. And that I have no problem with. Do, do you understand what a, what a meme is? Yes. Besides, like, in, in the broader sense, not in, like, lol no. cats. I, I know the word meme is a lot older than internet meme. Yes, okay. Mike. All right, all right. The internet so, did not invent the meme. So if memes are an intellectual virus, can it become so complex as to gain sentience? And that's what the uh, Doctor Who was about. And, and Nope. <laughs> Good night, well, everybody. It's, well, it's science <laughs> fiction. All right? It's science fiction. And they were coming up with the concept of a meta-creature. And this is the kind of stuff that I really sell into, all right? That's Can right. it happen? No, of course it can't happen. There can't be a sentient, self-replicating idea that's ridiculous. How Not would it, this universe. How, how would it even work? Like, what would the biology of a sentient idea be? since ideas in general only exist when they transfer from point A to point B. But I just, I like it. I like the concept. It's, it's high concept, and it's also simple. It doesn't require technology to explain. It's, it's fine. You, you don't have to explain why you like something. I do sometimes. I feel like I do. You, you don't. You, you can like whatever you want to like. Oh, that was the best red light run ever, and I only hit one car. Brilliant. Well, I'm getting ready to wrap this up, my friend. And we've been talking for close to 30 minutes now. So, this this is a longer episode than normal, even though I was not carting around anything. It's because of that long-ass road I was just on. Well, you, I'm sure you can cut out some stuff. Nope. Nope, don't cut out stuff unless it's stuff like what happened last episode, which if you haven't seen, Chuck, you need to. <laughs> uh, no, I've, I've not been online for some time. Yeah, I know. But I'll, I'll give it a shot. The, at least the last episode, which is called, um, well, not Sad Trucker, it should be, though. Uh, I think I labeled it something like The Shame of the Trucker. <laughs> that, that sounds like a Doctor Who episode. The Shame of the Trucker, a Doctor Who episode. BBC presents, uh, BBC and Big Finish Production present <laughs> The Shame of the Trucker, starring Colin Baker. <laughs> <laughs> All right, All right well. You, you have a good day. <laughs> All right, well, <clears throat> goodbye, everyone. I suppose I'll see you next time, and maybe next time I'll actually move cargo. Say good night, Chuck. Good night. Good night, everyone. Hey, do you have Skype? Want to be on the show? Can't wait to be stuffed into an animatronic suit? Shoot me a message to netevil at gmail.com. Put Truck in the subject, so I know it is from you. And thank you for watching. <laughs>